these partnership, which we prefer not to call SSPP because of its association with transmissible diseases, <laughs> <laughs> is, a, is a new partnership between USAID and AGRA. It's a $47 million cooperative agreement which supports the G8's new alliance on food security and nutrition. Now, the G8's new alliance is separate than the Feed the Future initiative, but I think they are interrelated. And so just keep that in mind. I think it was clear in the M&E presentation earlier how that so those linkages with SDF are. I think it's been made clear during the course of this meeting that we're not from scratch. I think we have some very ambitious targets that everybody has been challenged about on scaling. And AGRA has been in existence now for seven years. I think one of the decisions that led to the award of this cooperative agreement was to build upon AGRA's foundation uh, in doing work in these different programs. Now, I'm just going to describe them briefly. The first program Africa, uh, AGRA started was the Program for Africa Seed System, PATH. But we also have the Improving Soil Health Program, uh, providing better access to markets, building partnerships to change policies, and strengthening farmer organizations. And collectively, these create sort of ecosystem for, that we can build upon for scaling technology. Now, the partnership is more than just building upon AGRA's programs. It's to coordinate and build upon investments made by a whole host of partners. But this is really what we're trying to do, which is trying to build upon existing foundations to have some quick impact that we can then report back to USAID. And I hope, Julie, that this satisfies some of the issues that have come up in this meeting, but hey, if we have to start from scratch, it takes four seasons to multiply a crop. Well, actually, we've already made many investments which we can build upon. On the seed system work, because this, this partnership is largely focused on seed, but not exclusively, and I think we need to understand the background to the whole seed sector in Africa. Now, technology development and delivery has very traditionally been dominated by the public sector. I think we're all aware of, in all of the countries that we work that the government's been very heavily involved. Why have they been heavily involved? Because I think they recognize that seeds have tremendous benefits for farmers. So it's great that they have been involved, but hey, get out of the way and let us get on with our work. So liberalization has created opportunities for commercial investment, and in many countries, that process is, is really now beginning to get some traction. In Southern Africa, much more so than West Africa. However, the public sector feels threatened by change. Anybody who has dealt with public sector breeders, uh, regulatory authorities knows that they don't want to let go, you know? Uh, and I think we have to recognize that there's been a very paternalistic attitude to smallholder farmers. Policymakers make decisions about what farmers should plant. August seed release committees decide which of the varieties that farmers should grow. This is very paternalistic. In a democracy, I think it's the consumers who should make that decision. Every one of us uses mobile phones, and we probably have all chosen a different model of mobile phones to suit our own needs. Why can't small old farmers make the same choices about what they grow and what they plant? However, we recognize that both public and private sector interventions are required to make this whole system function effectively, and that we need to reassess the roles and responsibilities of the various players in this space. So what has been the agro path approach? PATH is the program for Africa Seed System. Well, I think first we need to understand the political economy. We often talk in, in many of these meetings that, that there is no political economy, but there are these strong vested interests that I've talked about. How have we addressed that issue? Well, we've provided targeted to support, support to both public and private sector actors, recognizing that both uh, entities have an important role to play and not, not just focusing on one group, but on making a more inclusive process and changing the dynamics between these different players. We then bring in fresh ideas, and very much we've focused on supporting entrepreneurs, young people, new bre uh, breeders who've just got a fresh education, been exposed to new ideas, to come into this space and try and change the dynamics as existing. We then put a lot of investment in demonstrating what we're doing, and in this process, we encountered bottlenecks on the policy side. Many of those bottlenecks have been talked, uh, mentioned by previous speakers in, in uh, Senegal, 
the issue of foundation seed supply not being properly addressed by the public sector is a major issue in pretty much all of the countries that we work in. And so we engage with those public sector uh, actors to try and change the status quo. And it's not just AGRA doing it, but it's also our grantees, because our grantees now see where these bottlenecks recur. So I'm just going to a little bit describe uh, ASA's approach. There have been four main components, because as it's been mentioned already in this meeting, the seed value chain or seed production and marketing is a specialized value chain in its own right. I think uh, Jean-Michel and his talk about rice stressed that. Now, it all starts from breeding, okay? If you don't have a, a new pipeline of new products, farmers aren't going to invest in, in buying something that they've already got. And how do you get new products? Well, you have to invest in breeding. So there's been a large education component, and Mulemia in her presentation talked about the number of PhD and master students that have been trained on this program. But you can train breeders, and then if you don't provide them the resources to do breeding, you don't get much output. So there's been a fund to development uh, of new varieties, new material by those breeders that have been trained. And then uh, we provide grants to small seed companies or entrepreneurs to take up those products which have largely come out of the public sector and then multiply them and market them. So this is where the link between the public and the private sector comes about. I used to work in the Malawi maize commodity team and it was a very much a state dominated system. The breeders would do their breeding then the seed multiplication would be done by a parastatal and marketed through the parastatal grain marketing board. All of that was liberalized, and now you have the public breeders collaborating closely with the private sector seed companies. And they feel very energized through that collaboration, uh, and that process is moving forward. And the final component of that chain has been agri-dealer development uh, to ensure that the products of research are available to farmers through commercial channels. So, this is the breeding, breeding work. Um, some of the students who've graduated from the program. This is providing grants to small older farmers and treating farming as a business. Training African enterprises how to produce high quality products. That's been mentioned uh, many times in this meeting. Make farmers aware of improved technologies. We often assume that because we know about these technologies, farmers do. But you don't have to go very far out into the rural areas to find that complete lack of knowledge about what is available. And then building the marketing networks where farmers live so that they can access these technologies. So the partnership, how are we going about this? Well, if we're not careful, we can come in, we can disrupt a lot of good development work that's been done. And I think we have to do a lot of consultation. We have to understand what the national priorities are, understand the landscape in which we're working before we make our granted investment. So that is being done through the development of national roadmap. We're also trying to identify new technologies. We're not just looking at agri grantees, but we're engaging with people like End to Africa, which has done a lot of work on legume technology, the National Agricultural Research System as a whole, Drought Tolerant Maze for Africa, headed by my friend there, Sadeki, the Hope Project, you name it. There's an enormous in a range of investments going on there which are producing technologies which can make a huge difference. We're then using tools developed by IFPRI and the Harvest Choice Program to screen some of these technologies to really establish a baseline target on productivity increases and target populations that we will reach. From this process, we will develop requests for proposals and solicit proposals that will support the develop development of agribusiness clusters. We have a strong focus on developing local capacity, and I think what does separate AGRA from many other types of institutions is that we do have a, uh, contact with a lot of local organizations. We feel that those local organizations need to be empowered to deliver many of the services and products that are needed to increase agricultural productivity. Luis talked about some of those types of organizations, the seed producing cooperatives. Who's going to produce the rhizobia? Is it going to be imported forever or are we going to make it locally? We need to develop an innovation system and in order to have that innovation system, we've got to have a more competitive environment on the ground. And that's really where our grant making can catalyze that process. 
We want to expand the spaces for market development through regulatory reform. Uh, I think Johannes Lin talked about this in his presentation, particularly in the area of seed regulation. But I think we're also going to be talking about fertilizer regulation. And that's the subject of the other meeting going on at the Sheraton Hotel at the moment. And finally, we're going to use the GA Corporation framework, which have been developed in each of the six countries where we'll be working, to assist in identifying private sector partners. Because the seed value chain doesn't just exist, it doesn't just hang out there. It's, got, it's driven by the market demand. Okay, if we don't understand where the market opportunities are and help our entrepreneurs producing the seed and develop those linkages, then we're going to be still remaining supply push type uh, scenario that Louise talked about yesterday. So, that's it. Thank you very much.